Hello there, my fellow Drupal addicted. This is Matt Petrowski making videos over at gotdrupal.com. I'm your Drupal addicted instructor, but in this video, what I'm doing is I'm creating a series of videos for the omega8.cc hosting service, which focuses specifically on Drupal. Now, there's going to be a number of videos in this series, and what I'm going to be teaching you is using Ager, or Ager, or however it's said, on omega 8s servers and how to update your sites. The reason I'm making this video is because I I have not personally updated my site in a while, and this gave me a great opportunity to show you the ins and outs and sort of become familiar with Ager, or Ager. I guess I'll start saying it as Ager. So let's head into this process. First and foremost, you will have been provided an email by Omega 8 that will have the path to your particular host. Now the domain name obviously has nothing to do with the domain name of your site and controlling your DNS is completely up to you. It happens to be that my server is this one right here. I believe if you hit it raw, you might hit the Got Drupal website or whatever default is. It may say under construction. I don't know. I haven't hit it myself personally, but go ahead and give that a try. Essentially though, when you hit this particular domain, the domain you were sent via email, via HTTPS, and you go to slash user, I think you can just hit it actually raw, what's going to happen is it may go try to go to user, but that was one of my most recent URL. What happens is you're going to get this uh, security certificate. Depending on which browser you hit, this is because they are using a non-signed certificate. This does not mean that it's not secure if you haven't already hit this, but of course if you're a developer, you probably already know that this is no big deal. You can obviously um, check it if you'd like. You can always click the however you access that particular certificate and take a look at it if you want. I can see right here that um, it was simply just generated by them. I uh, can't get much information out of the key and everything that is generated by um, OpenSSL, but needless to say, it goes without saying that you're going to have to either add this to your own uh, set of certificates or just always continue and that is dependent on what you're using. Now once you're on your main control panel of course you're going to be able to log in. I'll do that right there. And so I've logged in now. Now what we're going to go over is we're going to go over the process of updating your site. So let me bring up the Got Drupal site itself and then log into that with a slash user. And then we'll log into this as well. And I'm logged in now. Now, Omega 8 does a lot of things on their server, which is what I really like, is they really keep up to date on site tuning and site performance. But before I start going through everything about Omega 8 servers, how to administer them through um, Ager, and how to really optimize things. I wanted to mention that if your Drupal site is a crappy Drupal site that runs slow, it will be a crappy Drupal site that will just run slightly better on Omega's servers. You can create a crappy Drupal site that will not run or will run poorly. You have to optimize both your Drupal site and then run it on an optimized hosting provider, which Omega 8 is. So, having said that, you need to know that there are some things that you can fix. I won't be going over those things because we're talking about actually migrating or updating your site. So the first thing we need to cover is the basics. First, how do we get access to our site on Omega's boxes. Well, there's two ways to do this. You can either do it via the shell, which I have the a terminal up here. You can also do it via an FTP client, which if I switch over, I'm using forklift here on the Macintosh. Now, in the Drupal, in the Ager control panel, Ager, I should say, <clears throat> what you're going to have is you're going to have these areas of add site, sites, platforms, account, and exit. Now I'm going to be showing you how to create your own custom platform. In fact, that's what I did is I migrated my Got Drupal site, which was developed on my own server a long time ago with completely different performance, and I wanted to create my own platform. Now a platform obviously are all of those different things that you hear about, such as uh, Videola, um, Commerce, um, Drupal uh, press flow. You've got they've got default Drupal in here. They've got all kinds of stuff. ELMS. They've got feature server. Um, they've got Node Stream. But you can see right there, I've already created some of my own platforms. Uh, I created an original uh, Got Drupal, a Got Drupal P 
PF, which stands for press flow, and it got Drupal press flow 624. Uh, I'm managing news, node stream, open deals, open enterprise, open church, open public. Now, one of the good things is about Omega is they put all of the well-tested, stable distributions on your um, Agar control panel. One of the problems with that is, is that, you, as you can see, as I scroll, I've got this super long list of all of these platforms, and Agar really doesn't provide you a way to hide those things which you really don't find relevant. I'm not using any of the rest of these platforms. And the one thing that's good about Agar is it allows you to obviously manage multiple platforms, multiple sites, and multiple clients for those sites. It's one of the reasons that Agar was um, created. In fact, a long time ago, the precursor was called, it was broken down into multiple modules called Hostmaster, and I believe was developed by Bright originally, or by someone for Bright, if I've gotten that correct, incorrect. So how you find access to your stuff, because you can create any site on any platform. And currently all of my sites you can see are all uh, verifying and they're all checked. They've got the nice little green. And the way that Agar works is that you've got these tasks. And tasks are simply things that are just queued up. And let's discuss the whole point of Agar. The whole point of Agar is to do a lot of things that you would do manually or with a version control system in order to take a site from the three different stages, which are um, development, staging, and then live. And once a site is live, you pretty much want to leave that site live. You don't want to do anything on that site directly, such as update a module or change core or tweak things. You always want to do this in a development or a staging uh, environment. Development and staging really only applies if you've got a much larger site and you're going to you move to the next stage of development, you then move it into staging, which is sort of a testing, let's test out and make sure it works. Once staging actually works, then we can switch live off and move from staging to live. Most of the time you need at least two. You're going to have your live site and then let's just call it your development site. Or at least that's the situation with my Got Drupal site. I'm just a single guy. I work on my one site. I don't have multiple people accessing it. So the process of updating and upgrading normally would be, okay, I go into my Drupal site, whether it's live or not. If it's live, it's not a good idea. I update my modules and then I see if things explode. Well, Anchor takes a completely different approach. It says create a totally different site using the same code or the updated code and let, let's test and make sure that that works. So that's what we're going to be going through and that's what the purpose of this is. But as I mentioned, we need to be able to access our site in order to do little tweaks to it. Maybe let's say we'll go as far as tweaking the theme. So for any site that you have, on Omega's boxes. If you want to get to that site, you need to know how to. So here is my Got Drupal site. Now my gotdrupal.com website is currently running off of a platform which is a Drupal 6.19 and it's a in the P001. Now they've updated things so that if you take a look at the platforms, what you're going to see is if I didn't click that, what you're going to see a lot of the times is if we get down to where's some of the newer ones that they've got, press flow, I believe when we get to the 624, you can see what they're doing right here where they've got Drupal 624, Drupal 624, I believe these are based on a press flow core uh, for the Drupal 6 release, but they've got this D, P, and S. The D standing for development, the P standing for production, and the S standing for staging. So if you're getting confused by all of the different numbering systems that they're using on Omega, you can either research their help or sort of figure out that they're usually talking about those three, th three things, development, production, and staging. Uh, live being a synonymous term with um, your production server. So what I was going to point out about the sites and about accessing your information is what can be really confusing is that on the box that Omega 8 provides you, it's what's 
called um, CH rooted or jailed. It's locked down so that you really can't do a whole lot of damage to yourself. Now if you're an admin like I've been on my own box with full root access this can be very frustrating because you'll go in and you'll start to do things on the command line and things just won't work. Well I'm going to show you the two different ways that you're going to be able to access your site. The first one is through FTP and you need to know that on the Omega 8 box you have there are two different users that pretty much your account is using. The user which has full access to all of the different aspects of the sites or a lot of different areas on the box because you'll never get root on somebody else's hosted servers is typically the name of the user of whatever you've been given without the .ftp. So for example on my particular box the name of my user is uh, 01. Um, now you can see that right here. 01 is what Agar runs as and it's what does a lot of the steps that you would do manually pre-compiling, uh, checking for modules, making sure they verify and then actually migrating sites from one platform to another, migrating sites within the same platform. We're going to go through all of that but you need to know how to access any given site. That was very confusing for me. So the way that you do that is you go onto the site and once you go onto the the particular site that you're looking at you need to know what platform it's on because the platform is the actual root install of the Drupal core that you're running. So when I select on the platform, this older one of Drupal 6.19, what I have right here is this publish path. Now that publish path is what gives me the clue. Now remember I just said that Omega 8's boxes are CH rooted or I, I forget what the shorthand version of saying that, truded or something like that, but it's basically jailed so that you can't go into specific paths. You must go into, in fact, an explicitly specific path, and it's the path that I have highlighted here on screen. So whatever the publish path is for the platform that you want to access that particular site, all you're going to do is you're going to copy that path from directly within the Agar uh, control panel on Omega 8's boxes. Once you have that, you can go over to your FTP client, which I'll move over to Forklift, and then using something like, here I have my show favorites. I would be able to create a favorite under these servers um, simply by click clicking this little plus sign in this particular uh, item. But what all you do is you then, and I'll just edit this one, you then put in your uh, username, or this is the name of my particular favorite. You put in, of course, your server. Uh, you've got your username. I don't have a particular password, and that's because I'm using my, um, my key, my SSH key. Or, uh, yeah. And they're also not using the conventional port for SSH. They are using port 27, and that's mentioned in your email as well. Um, there is, here's where you're going to paste that path. So for as many different shortcuts as you want, you're going to be able to go that. And reason that reason for this is, if I click cancel and close, and if I click um, go to this particular path, you can see that what I am, I'm on my box as the 01.ftp user, data, disk, and then whatever the username is, distro 001, and then I'm actually in the root folder of a particular install that I created, a particular platform. If I was to go to that, that favorites again and create, um, can I duplicate one? Let's see if I can. There we go, I can duplicate that one. And then we'll just call this one uh, simply press flow, what I had it named as. And I will simply paste in the path that I had taken so that this will take me directly into that. So there I'll save it and I'll close it. And so now right here I have the press flow. I'll move it down with the rest of my servers or move it right there. Now what happens is I can go directly into that particular platform if it's one of the platforms that what are the defaults that are provided by Omega 8 and then I can go into the sites. Now of course I could have added the sites as well but there I can see is my gotdrupal.com website. Going into that I can then access all of my uh, my files, modules, themes if I wanted to drag them up manually and that's the process that I use. That's great. 
I'll also be showing you in part of this series how to use Drush and how to install modules and update them and when you want to do that and when you don't want to do that. Remember, Agar is all about not messing with your live site. So that's how we access the site um, from our control panel grabbing the information we need, adding a shortcut within our FTP, and then being able to go to the site within the FTP. On the shell side of things, if you provided a key to your uh, to Omega 8, then you're probably going to be able to use a shortcut, which for me, my shortcut to my box is simply 08, which is short for Omega 8. So once I log in via the shell, you can see that I'm logged in as my 01.ftp user. Now, if I ever need information about what's available, obviously right here up at the top it tells me that I can either type the question mark or simply help. So help is going to give me a list of all of the possible commands that they've given me access to. So unlike my own root access on another box, where I might be able to do all kinds of different things, I am limited in terms of what's available here. And even though they list everything here, sometimes some things won't work, such as piping something to get. And we will see that we can actually get an example of this. So in this exact same example of what I did by going over to the control panel, here in the control panel, if I wanted to go into a particular platform where a particular site is, I would copy that, and then we would just come in down here, and I would go CD, and then I would paste, and jump directly to that site. Now I can do an LL, and I can give a listing if I needed to see CD into my sites. I can CD into that, and I can do LL, and there I am. I can see my got Drupal right there, go into that, and do all kinds of things. So just for the sake of showing you what you can't do and what happens on the command line, now that I'm in the actual folder of the Got Drupal website, I can do things with Drush, such as Drush status, and I can get a connection to the actual site. And I can do things like Drush SM to get a list of all of the different modules that are currently installed. Now here's where we're going to see on the command line that we're going to hit errors, such as doing something like this, which is what I'm used to doing, doing a Drush SM and then piping to grep all of the enabled modules. I'm going to get a forbidden syntax drush piping to grep enabled is not allowed. I have two warnings left before I get logged out. So this will automatically log me out of my box. It doesn't mean that once it happens once that you're never going to be able to get in again. You just simply have to re-log in again. It's just a system that they're using to probably notify them what people are doing on each of the boxes that they are managing for you. So it turns out that there is a uh, command if you did want to find out what all of the enabled um, uh, modules are. You can always uh, type uh, drush help and then whatever the command is, sm. So you can see right here that I have a status. So if I wanted to get a status of all of the modules that I have in installed, I would be able to type drush sm dash dash status equals and put in um, enabled. And then I would get just a list of the enabled modules on my Got Drupal site. Now this will be something that will be useful in future videos when we want to do something such as build a make file or a profile which will be what we're going to do. So those are the two ways that we get onto or into our particular site. From the control panel, we copy, we can create a shortcut, we can access it via an FTP tool, we can also access it via the terminal or going through the shell and accessing our individual site. From here, what we need to know is what is the process of updating the site, and that's what I'm going to go over next.